Hey guys and welcome back to another video and I hope you are okay on that side of the screen and today to assemble a computer and try to answer a question that we get here a lot which is hey Robert I want to build a computer I want to put Windows I want to put Akintosh which we are going to do both but I'm really scared that things will not go accordingly and in this particular video I'll try to be as simple as possible as generic as possible regardless of the component that we choose and show how simple can it be to assemble a computer now before we move on don't forget to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video which is Wondershare Dr. Phone and it's available for iOS and Android we can do phone backups and restore to and from our Windows or Mac computers. Data recovery, phone transfers, system repairs such as black screens, boot loops, etc. Especially on Android phones and a lot more. There's a free trial version. I will leave the link down below so that you guys can check it out if this is the software that you want to use or not. And now moving to the build of our computer. The first component that we should choose is the case. And although it's something aesthetic and uh, it has a lot of options in terms of color in terms of what components it can take and it's a, a very difficult choice in this particular case i've got one of the latest uh, cases from lee and lee this is the land cool 2 it's a spacious with some really interesting features that i will show more in detail when i do the complete review of the case but this was my choice in this particular moment. Now in terms of main features, it will support radiators up to 360 millimeters on the front and 240 on the top, which is great. And we will be using one right over here. In terms of storage, it will take up to three times 3.5 inch hard drives and two 2.5 inch. It also has three fans with a lot of bells and whistles that we will check more in detail when we do the complete review. But this to take out of the way that in terms of uh, assemble really easy the hardest part is to take it out of the carton box just kidding really easy as well and then it comes with a manual it comes with screws and it comes with things that we'll put aside and we will be using depending on the components that we will be putting together on our build now on the second part i would place the motherboard or to be more precise i always do that and in this particular case we will be using the biostar racing b460 gta and it's suitable for the 10th generation intel cpus that we will talk in just a few moments things that i would like to mention here it will take two m.2 ssds inside and it has space for all connections to six sata hard drives which is great up to 64 gigabytes of ram and in terms of place it's really really easy it also comes with a manual and then according with the case and it will be very easy to place the motherboard just screw it in and that's it now have in mind that some cases don't have an open back plate so we will need in case of using a cooler that needs to put a back plate on the back of the motherboard we will need to take care of that before putting the motherboard in this particular case all lights are green we are ready to go this is a 2020 case so it has all the bells and whistles so we are more than fine but just be aware of that and of course we will talk more about the motherboard on a separate video features and so on and so forth things that we can do with it because it has some really interesting stuff right over there now next we will put our cpu and we have talked about it in a previous video this is the i5 10,400, 6 cores, 12 threads, and we will do a few more videos regarding performance on gaming and performance on video editing. Now, in terms of placing it on the motherboard, really easy as well. We just need to open that thingy right over there on the motherboard. And of course, there are manuals to support all of this. So if you are not very comfortable, just read the manual, take your time, and then put it in and that's about it really really easy usually what I put in next is the CPU cooler in this particular case we can use air coolers or water coolers uh, air coolers are a bit cheaper a bit noisier and not as much effective in terms of lowering temperature but depending on the setup we might choose air or water cooler now I did choose a water cooler from NZXT this is a great cooler it's the Kraken X53 
RGB 240 millimeters so just a great cooler right over here in terms of assemble once again NZXT is a respected old brand and it has all the things necessary so that anyone can assemble and we can read some instructions but it's really easy we just need to put the back plate on the motherboard and then uh, screw in the cooler and screw in the radiator to the case and basically this is it just a plug and play device like uh, I would plug in a cable I can just put a cooler like this now RAM I do believe that it's probably the easiest thing right over here I'm using G-Skill Trident Z RGB and what I need to do is just put them on the four slots of the motherboard of course I need to be careful that there's only one position to put them but it's something that I don't believe that you need any instruction now the GPU that we will be using is the KFA2 I just placed the two NVMe first then the GPU as I was stating just because I work better this way after placing the GPU I will get a little bit less space now in terms of storage I will be using several options right over here but depending on our needs you might want to use more or you might want to use less or use less and then upgrade during the time now as we've seen on the case we have space for a lot of drives so I'll be using one M.2 SSD from Sabrent this is the rocket NVMe 4.0 this is the fastest SSD on the market reaching 5000 megabytes per second on reads and on writes which is something really crazy i did test out on the amd platform i will have to test out on this motherboard right over here if we don't get the 5000 which i'm not really sure yet we will get at least 3500 so it's more than enough to get this thing pumping without any issues now i'll be using also a one terabyte ssd nvme from HP this is the AX950 also a really fast and this will be for our second operating system which will be Mac OS so stay tuned for that we will be doing an Akintosh right over there and then I also will use a SATA 2.5 inch from HP this is the S700 to test out the 2.5 slots and I will be using a Toshiba 2 terabytes mechanical hard drive 3.5 inches to test out the slots for the mechanical hard drives now the GPU that we will be using is the KFA2 and we have seen this GPU in the past the NVIDIA RTX 2070 Super it's a great GPU for gaming and video editing and if you haven't checked it out I'll try to leave a link somewhere right over here or uh, down below and you can check the results and so on and so forth it's a great GPU and in terms of assemble really easy and then finally but not less important we will have the power supply what I've chosen for this build it's a great PSU I believe that a totally reasonable price this is the latest NZXT C650 and it's a fully modular PSU more info down below but the important here is if you are someone that cares a lot about the mess inside your case and cables and so on and so forth then fully model is great if you don't like so much or if you don't mind then any other PSU with all the cables I'm probably a little bit in the middle more on the organized side of things so I love fully modular power supplies and from NZXT I've used quite a few and this one the expectation is high but I will uh, as with all the components to a dedicated video with the experience and so on and so forth with this PSU and guys basically this is it in terms of the choice this is my choice for this build I will leave links down below some links right over here so that you guys can check out more detailed uh, information about the components and videos that we have done in the past if you want to follow this series because we will be doing a really interesting Akintosh right over here then subscribe to the channel because I will be doing not only the individual review of every component that we haven't seen yet but also the installation of Mac OS on this machine so that we can compare with other machines that we've got right over here and that is it hopefully this video was helpful especially to take that question out of the way that is is it difficult to assemble a computer I want to choose my own components and I do believe that you are right you should choose your own components and don't leave that task to the uh, manufacturers or to the shops that you see around now one thing that it's okay if you don't want to assemble is choose your own components and then choose a store that will assemble them for you that would be totally fine in my opinion but if you haven't had that experience 
then I would challenge you to build your computer because the sensation will be a lot different. And that being said, I'm going to shut up a huge thumbs up to you that side of the screen. If the video was helpful in some way, don't forget the usual and very appreciated thumbs up right over there. My name is Roberto George and as always, I'll see you guys on the next one.